I am grieved, y'all. If there's something that is beyond grieved, like <laughs> devastated, or um, <laughs> that would be me. Um, <clears throat> I can't really say that. You know, I'm, I'm sad. I'm, I'm disappointed. They just in things that are happening around the world and what has happened over the past um, few months um, and to where we are today because it just doesn't seem like that's enough. Uh, grieved seems like it would fit because I feel like I'm experiencing like the death of something. The death of, I don't know, ideas. Uh, maybe it's because I can't really see the, well, nobody can really see the future, right? But I mean, you know, we're heading, we just hit the summer. We, we, we're, we're, we, we hit June. God, it doesn't even feel like June. Um, And so much has been lost already as far as things this year, uh, you know, and, and it may seem trivial to some people, but, you know, but then when you look at the bigger scale things and you look at things in the country and, um, and you look at where things are going and it doesn't look good, and then you see maybe the, the death of ideals, um, and then you look at well, goodness, what's going to happen in the fall and uh, what's, you know, the future for our children and then good grief, what's happened in the past couple of weeks of just recent events, what's going to happen to our country and, and, and the phrase that I've really hated for so long is this new normal, the new, new normal. Is there even a new normal? Anything, what is our church going to look like and what is school going to look? Of course, we homeschool, but, but, but I'm thinking in general for the whole country, what is school going to look like for a lot of kids? And what is the family situation going to look like? And what is going on vacation going to look like? All of that's changed for, for us and um, just going to visit family and going to travel. And now even having conversations with friends, going to the store, phrases and, and saying things where you're going to say something and, and all of a sudden it's going to be taken out of context and you're, you're questioned. You're even questioned for, for, for saying a phrase about your mask because you can't breathe. Yeah, that happened. So, you know, my kids and I were in the grocery store and we don't we didn't have the surgical masks on. We had the, we have these allergy masks that we buy. And those are the kind that you could just pull up and down over your face. You know, they look like a big sock, you know, and you pull them up and they have designs on them. And, you know, and, and one of my kids had one on that when you wear it here, it actually looks like a, a skull right here, you know, so it looked like a sugar skull or whatever. And you see the big teeth and, and my kids, uh, one of my kids were doing that and they were, laughing because when they were when they would breathe in the um the teeth they had it lined up and the teeth would the mask would would um the, the uh they would suck in the mask a little bit right here and they were you know do that <laughs> and um and the mat and it looked like they were like I, 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 you know they were talking <laughs> and stuff you know uh and they were laughing and then they started singing the song um um i don't know who sings it is it ariana grande breathing and breathing and breathing whatever and they were doing that and they were then they were laughing and then they were talking and then um but you know when we got to doing that they were talking about like oh my goodness I can't breathe in this mask. <sighs> this lady came by and she was a white lady and she got in my kid's face and she she said, "Do you think you're being funny?" right in my kid's face. Now, I had my back turned and I was over in the prod I was looking in the dairy section and looking at yogurt or something <laughs> and and uh, my kids all of a sudden were instantly afraid uh, because some stranger got in their face. They had no clue what she was talking about. And then when, and when she walked away, she was, um, she was talking to her husband, who happened to be a black man, and he was carrying their baby. 
and she started yelling in the store. She said something. She, she said, um, uh, you're not going to be breathing when I put my, my hands around your freaking neck. You know, she, of course, she didn't say it that way. She said it other ways. And I remember hearing some woman saying something about hands around your freaking neck. And I had remember looking around and I remember seeing the couple, but I had no idea that it was directed at my kids. And when I turned around and went back to my kids, you know, they told me what had happened. And I went to go, I was going to go look for that couple. Like, oh my goodness, please, this was a misunderstanding. And this is not, you know, all my kids just told me to leave it alone because they didn't want to make any more of a scene because she was already hot under the collar. This is, this is what I am, I am grieved about these things, about the things that have, lo- that have been lost, common sense and common decency. It's, it's, that, it's more fear and there's more division and there's just even more hate. And these things, you know, it's not that these things are new. These things have been here. These things have been in the world, and it's not surprising. It's just that there's now there's now even more of a divide. The hate is elevated, and it's just that these things have been here. This this level, and it just and it's rising, and in and it's it it's been here, and it's just that little bit, just instantly, bam, and it just everything just escalated so fast and so quickly. It, it, it became a battle of the masks and, and, and we have people panic buying toilet paper and paper towels and we have people fighting over this stuff. And now what we have fighting in the stores over supplies because of survival issues and panic, now we have people in the stores looting the very stores that they were fighting in for toilet paper and and that kind of thing now they're they're looting those stores and tearing them apart for no apparent reason and tearing up the very communities that were providing for them just a few months ago not to blame anybody i'm just saying that that's that's just i'm just seeing the 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 differences in just a few months and and the the judgments and the criticisms and, and the hatred and the fear with the masks and the masks have become political and the masks have become um, a status symbol and it's it's a you know there's there's all the judgments over that racism and and, and racial lines and these things that has become political and it's being used for all of these other things and it's like the people in this country are being used and our emotions are being used for so many different things there's so much and people need to wake up and not to wake up to what's going on around them because we all know what's going on around us but just that we need to wake up because what we need to wake up so that we don't fall into to trying to fix a problem with another problem I mean to trying to yeah well kind (laughs) of you can't fix a problem with what started the problem Martin Luther King said darkness cannot drive out darkness only light can do that Hate cannot drive out. Hate, only love can do that. We can't overcome division by being divisive. And we can't reduce anger by utilizing anger. We can't overcome manipulation by using manipulation. That doesn't work. We can't overcome racism with racism. Okay. So that doesn't work, you know, so, so kind of, you know, you've done it to me now. I'm going to do it to you. I mean, that, that, no, no, that doesn't work either. Um, you can't overcome abuses of power by further abusing power. And you, you can't stop people from feeling powerless by a show of greater power. The more you tighten your grip talk, the more star systems will slip through your fingers. So, you know, politicians, they're not going to solve our problems. We can't be looking at them to solve our problems, okay? Because as long as they see it as an opportunity for, uh, for, for points to win points for themselves and, and score points against their pon- opponents, nope, they're not going to solve this because that's all they're doing is they're just trying to gain points for themselves, okay? It's just more division. Divided parties cannot create a unified nation. Okay, it's not going to happen. Um, our press, the media, that's not going to help us uh, be informed in helpful ways as long as they keep spreading disinformation and, and feed their appetite for clicks and views and who's going to be the first to report this. I said mis- I should say misinformation. I said disinformation. And, and the church, 
oh, the church. I've been getting on the church a lot in these past few months. But the church as a whole, the church is not going to solve this problem either if we do not learn what it means to be healers and ministers of reconciliation in action and not just in word. We can talk. Oh, the church can talk a big game. The church can say a whole lot from our, from our nice armchairs and stuff. But we have to get messy. We have to get out there and we have to be healers and we have to be ministers of reconciliation in action. Okay, love is messy. We have to roll up our sleeves and we have to get messy with people. That means we have to have the hard conversations. We have to get out there. We have to leave the comfort. We have to get uncomfortable and have the conversations that need to be had. We need to be saying things that need to be said and in a way that need to be said, not how I want to say them or how, you know, it's, it's how they need to be said. You know, when you think about how Jesus was, when he walked on this earth and when he was here he said the things that needed to be said in the way that needed to be said he was a culture translator of the day and when he was here that's why he told so many parables he said things that needed to be said in the way that the people understood the people that he was talking to when he was talking to the shepherds he told what needed to be said in in, in, a, in a story that they would understand Right? He didn't try to speak in terms that were high and lofty and very scholarly and theological and stuff for shepherds who weren't going to understand it. He spoke in their language and he came to, their, to where they were at. Right, And he, would, he challenged people to come up and he came to where other people were at. That's how he was. He didn't sit in some high and lofty ivory tower and expect you to come up there. He knew what was going on because he came down and he walked with the people. The church needs to do that and stop sitting in the pews and having all of your programs in the club, uh, you know, in the club atmosphere and everybody is in there and that everybody looks like you. Okay, sorry, I'm stepping on some toes. But if, if you're going to your church and everybody looks like you, and, um, and you're there every time the doors are open, while well, that is all good, but you're not out in your community rolling up your sleeves, getting messy with people. And I'm not talking about community service, but I just mean getting, having those conversations, having the hard conversations, talking to people, empathizing, sympathizing, feeling the pain, hearing what needs to be heard, listening to people, trying to relate with people, to walk a mile with them you know, then we are not, the church is not going to help. And they're not going to help solve this problem at all. And of all people that need to be helping right now, it is the church. But the church seems to be silent.